But good morning, and thank good morning. you for coming. I'm John Luscombe. This is uh, Todd Beringer. This is uh, Tim Fisher. And this is Dale Ziegler. There we go. And um, we uh, appreciate everyone being here this morning, and we're here to kind of talk about the uh, idea, the, the concept, and the production of this uh, promotional box that, that we did for about 470 clients slash prospects. And we're gonna talk about um, the production of this piece and then also the pearl that was involved with it. We're gonna talk about the QR code and then the reporting and the statistics behind this, this piece. But, but uh, before we get started with this, I just wanna make sure that, that um, we all know that Metzger's, are, the core part of our business really is printing and mailing. And in the last year or so, we've really incorporated some really cool software and equipment that allows us to do more things other than just printing and mailing. But again, the core part of our business is printing and mailing. We installed some equipment software that allows us to do some very, very cool things. And our main goal with this piece is how can we show off our variable data, our QR code technology, our Perl technology, and also this, this custom packaging type of, of work that, uh, that we're starting to get pretty darn good at. So with that being said, we kind of want to walk you through this process of how we did this and created it. Todd and Tim and Dale are going to help us with that. And uh, I think with that, we'll just kind of get going here. With, uh, yeah, and we're doing this kind of as a panel discussion, kind of more of a round table. So feel free at any time, raise your hand or just blurt out a question. We're not uh, offended by any means, so just interject. Yeah, we want it to be very open and, you know, just holler. There's no such thing as a as a dumb or a silly question and as, as we go through things if you see things that you you've got questions about or how did you guys do that you know please just uh, you know please just let us know all right i think the first thing we're going to start here is uh you know we've got kind of a video that that we're going to go through that shows the the production of the project and then um and then we'll kind of walk through each it's just a two minute video so it's not going to take very long here and we'll get right into it All right, so the first thing that we basically had to do was, as you can see, come up with the idea and concept. So, you know, knowing that we had this equipment, we said, well, let's, let's get out there, let's make an impact, let's do something different. So, um, we had to show, you know, what's, what's our intent of this piece gonna be? You know, that was the first thing we, you know, this is going to basically the first stage, which is planning. Um, and basically our, our intent was showing multiple <coughs> capabilities within in one, one box. Um, as John mentioned earlier, you know, you, we have the QR code, the, the Perl, um, a couple 
promotional products. <coughs> you saw the T-shirt in there. We have the uh, uh, the mouse pad, uh, the variable variable um, printing cap capabilities, uh, and then the box itself, the uh, the printing and cutting of that. Um, and then also the intent was to show position you know, of who we are, um, and then also drive people <coughs> to the website. And that's basically why you guys are most of you are sitting here because. You either receive the marketing kit itself or someone in your office did. Um, and some of you may have secondhand got uh, something either through our website um, or Facebook uh, or, or, a, uh, or an e-blast. And then the other thing was uh, wow factor. So basically that's what we got from a lot of people. Um, actually there's someone in this room right now, I remember I got a voicemail from that person, basically, uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but he doesn't have a lot of hair. <laughs> and, and, the, and the voicemail went something like, wow, I can't believe this, how can I do this, I got to do something like this, this could work perfect for us, I want to put this into my budget, what, you know, and we got a lot of phone calls like that, we got emails like that, um, we had people, you know, calling us up saying, hey, I, I want to do something like this, we had just talked about it yesterday. I didn't know you guys could do it. Um, so I think our, our goal, what we wanted to do, um, our idea and our concept, you know, ended up paying off. So, uh, and and the one thing with that is that the the uh, you know because we have all the equipment here and things, we we produce 470 packets. They're about 70 bucks a piece. It's an expensive promotion. There's no question about it. And is what we really feel like this type of thing is geared for is for either yourselves as a company or if you're an agency and have clients, use this type of idea, take it to a client to, that's got a, a new product coming out, a new service, and if you want to generate some interest and some buzz, this is kind of the way to do it. You're going to hit them with all the latest technology type of things, the pearls, QR codes, information about so, uh, social media and things. And it's really an attention-getting thing. So the, the thing that we've noticed with this project is as we make client stops and visits and things, we're seeing our box a month later on people's shelves. It's, it's, it's hanging around. And so it's, um, even though the interest, you know, you guys are all here today, but even though the interest is, uh, is top of mind for a lot of people as soon as they get it, it's going to keep you know, it's got some shelf life, and, and you'll see that here in a minute. But um, so that was the main thing that we really wanted to create. And so, as as I look at you guys sitting in your seats, you know, this is not a great idea to produce a thousand of them just because they're expensive. But finding that 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 target market <coughs> in which you can really utilize, and you know, if it's a new product launch for something, you know, that. Um, really deserves some extra attention. This is a great vehicle to, to be able to get some attention. And, you know, John said these aren't cheap, and by no means are they now. But that said, um, a lot of it has to do with the size of the box. You know, if you, know, you want to <coughs> save a couple bucks and do a similar item, it really comes down to how many boxes you can get up on a sheet, um, which will definitely reduce the price a little bit. So, you know, um, down the road, we'd like to show, you know, how we can do the same thing with a little bit smaller um, and, and cut some costs that way. That way we can make it a little more affordable for, for people to do something like this. And then in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's you know, going back to what we're going to share with you, it is the list, your, your, your target, target audience, but also your ROI. You know, if you're, if you're sending this out to 50 people that, whether it's a purchase price, if you're, if it's a, uh, you know, we always say get, you know, heads in beds, butts in seats, uh, and money, uh, money out of someone's pocket. You know, if you're trying to, if it's a bed and head for a healthcare facility, let's say, uh, you know, that could be thirty thousand dollars a year. And so, what's a seventy dollar box or a sixty dollar box? Or, you know, or if you're asking for money, a ten thousand dollar donation or something. Again, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it's your ROI. You got to look at that. So, uh, moving on. Uh, yes. Sorry, a quick question. Sure. You talked about different sizes. Do you guys have um, dies for different size boxes? It's not necessarily a die. Well, I can start passing that around right now. Um, you basically, what you can do, that shows some different types of boxes. 
We, we, we can basically, and that's also online, so you can check it out online. Uh, you can get on there and basically say, okay, well I know I want a six by six by six box. Um, and then you can kind of find the type of box that you want. But let's say, well, oh, my product won't fit in there, or what I'm, my marketing idea is not gonna fit in there in six by six by six, which you might possibly see in there. The software basically customizes it to, to the box that you need and will give you that dot. It so, import, we'll, it's all vector art, essentially. So and you'll see later on in the presentation that um, the eye cut um, is based off vector art. You know, we can create any dive, if you will, quote unquote dive by vector art, outline it on the fly, um, and cut as needed. So these are just a starting point for you. And uh, as you page through, you might see some ideas. And like I said, there's the, the possibilities are endless. And, and this is digital. So you know, we, we John said we did 470 of these, but you can do 10, you can do five. If you've got one idea, you've got to hit you know, five people or, or one person, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, quantities, quantities vary. So if you've got a really hot prospect or hot target or hot, uh, you know, someone endowment-wise, um, <laughs> you, uh, you, know, you can do these custom boxes. And, we, um, you know, and saying that, you know, even if it's going to be a, a large run, you know, and you just need a mock-up for a client. You know, think of us for something like that as well. We can create the box to show your client to really say, okay, this is what it's going to look like, um, and then you can. Um, and there's no dies involved with this. So, so the piece of equipment that you saw on the video, that's called an eye cut machine, and basically it takes four foot by eight foot sheets of of any type of a material, and it's basically like an AutoCAD type of a system hooked up to a router. But it, what was the dimension, John? Four foot by eight foot. And that's the sheet size? That's the sheet size. You can also do roll by roll. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the nice thing with that is, it, is that you basically just, just create a template and um, then, then we save it out and that, that template becomes the die per se. So all of these were cut out on the eye cut. There was no die involved. In, in that process. It also does scoring, cutting, drilling, and things as well. And um, at the end, we'll go over and see that piece of equipment in, in action. Yeah, if you, if you went to a box manufacturer that actually had to create a die, you're probably looking at, I would guess, a four to $500 die or something like that. So that's, that price is zero. So I'll just a little bit of set of um, All right, so content and design. Um, Tim is within our, our e-services slash Mac Creations department, kind of heads that up. Um, and then Dale over there is also in the e-services department, and he's our, our genius when it comes to pearls and, uh, and the QR codes and everything, he understands that quite well. So you've got three very smart people up here and then myself. <laughs> so uh, content, content design, again, the audience, um, you really want to figure that out because you don't want to, you know, I don't want to say waste your money, but since this is an investment in these boxes, you don't want to just say, hey, my mailing list is uh, you know, 400 people, I'm just going to send out to everybody. You really got to you know, dig down through there and figure out who that's going to go out to. Um, wanted it to have a, the presence and impact. Um, and that basically, you know, like I said earlier, you know, we wanted to do something different. You know, we could have we sent a postcard out, but you know, what, what makes impact? You know, when people were getting these, you know, it's just, like I said earlier, you know, the, the wow factor. Um, we definitely got that. And as John said, you know, these are still sitting around on people's uh, desks and, and they're keeping them. We've got some customers uh, that are going and taking these to their customers um, in the agency world. So um, it's definitely made that impact. Obviously, you have, you know, you get your UPS packages every day and typically know a lot of stuff that's coming in. But you know, how many of you uh, saw a UPS guy bring this package in looking at it going, is this and you know, get a little excited and confused and then you sit down and you know, pick it up and open it and hopefully it had a, a lasting impression and then the, of course the uh, hands-on uh, being interactive with uh, opening the kit and everything that you had in there opening did everybody open uh, or who got them did, did you open the mouse so you got the shirt out there yes <laughs> some people have and some people have not so if you uh if you did open it you'll see how wrinkled it was yeah it's not yeah. wrinkle free it's, <laughs> it's gonna take 10 or 12 washes and it's ironing to get that out but and that was uh, the most fun you know, yeah that was, yeah uh, it was. 
you know, the, but that was, it was, you know, part of the fun factor too, and, and being the interactive part, so. Uh, and that part was done here also? The, well, the, the, that was done through our promotional division. Okay. So, and that's something that we'll kind of get into as we, we move on, but that, that's an up and coming division here that's working out pretty well. So the shirt, the shirt was not produced here, but it was, it was sourced here like an ASI type of right. item, so. The t-shirt was designed, but produced. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Yeah, it the creativity and everything else is was yeah. basically all done in house. So, uh, what do we got next here? Targeting your list again. I mean, hate to hate this like a dead horse, but uh, you know, qualifying your customers and prospects appropriately uh, again very important. You know, m myself as a salesperson, going through a, a a mailing list, you know, it's not the funnest thing, and, I, and we get that from customers all the time that. You know, here's your mailing list and find out well those people haven't worked for a company for two years or uh, they're obsolete for some reason. It's a very, very you know, important part of this process. And again, you don't want to uh, you don't want to throw money out the window. Yeah, we can't stress that that aspect. That 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 is probably the most important part of of the data <coughs> and the um, the response that you get that that list needs to be squeaky clean it needs to be up to date and it, it just needs to be you know spot on with what you're trying to do here you cannot spend too much time on that database to, to get it ready and in, internally here we get like nine people that, that were putting contacts and prospects together on that list and so we just we went over it and over it and over it and just um, really wanted to make sure that, that we had that dialed in. So, it, you know, obviously the content and, and the design, and, you know, the production of this is important, but that means nothing if the list is is not accurate. I mean, it's gotta be, like I said, it, it, it's gotta be 100% correct and just spot on target wise. So, in um, you know, the mailing side of things, we see a lot of different lists come in and databases from all different kinds of of nonprofits in in the city and, and from a lot of other different clients, and um, it, it, it is a lot of times a interesting thing to see how these lists come in because people within companies will be combining lists and they're not set up the same. The fields are aren't consistent, and we have some extra cleanup here. So uh, you know, with that being said, it's it's the the most important part of this, of this project. Really. It's not just making sure that the, the list is actually um, formatted correctly, but I mean, really defining your target market is probably the, the number one thing because you can have the greatest content in the world and if the right person isn't seeing it, then it's a waste. So your, your file rates are going to be basically based on the quality of the list. So if you're wondering, you know, I was expecting a 10 or 20% response and I had a 1% response, but maybe that was because you did a blanket mailing just talking to the wrong people. So. All right, the variable data printing that you saw. Now, the, has everyone actually seen the box? Is there anyone that hasn't opened it up and went through it? Okay. Uh, so on the front, John, what would you like to get, what do you want to get done? Um, I think that's the only thing on the front. Inside, you have the QR code that directed to the website. Now that wasn't variable, but that's a capability that we can do here. So it, it'd be a variable uh, QR code that's gonna take you right into your own personal website. Uh, and then of course the, uh, the pearl button down at the bottom, I mean, everyone here signed up for the, uh, the drawing as well, correct? Okay, and nobody won anything out of that drawing, right? Did you guys see the uh, Facebook check-in over there? You check in, there's a, there's another chance. Not for an iPad, but for something else. <laughs> <laughs> See if Mike getting on his phone already. Uh, <laughs> uh, someone did win the iPad, and, and it's kind of an interesting story. Um, another rep took the iPad to the client, and this company, um, the person that won, the the company has a a, um, a policy where any type of award or anything, yeah. a gift. <laughs> goes to the owner. Goes to the owner first, and then <laughs> he decides. He decides what happens with it. So we're hoping that he doesn't have children 
<laughs> that would love it. So, and that, and that, uh, you know, the gentleman that, that did win does end up with it. But he had to hand it over like that. So. It's kind of so. Yeah. Is he still with that crossed. company? <laughs> um, okay. And then also the uh, the mouse pad. If you guys, if everyone noticed that the mouse pad had the company name or or organization name on there, and everyone knows that these come out right. So you can put family photo or something else in there. Uh, and then on the back of the box, you know, when we did these, since these were personalized, we had to make sure that John was going with the UPS label. So on the UPS label, we coded something with the number, and then that number was also underneath where the label went. So we were matching up number one with number one, two with two, and so on and so forth. So that's how we got the, uh, we kept everything straight. And when we process uh, your list, it will, it will automatically be assigned a sequence number so that way everything's always the same throughout. Is there a reason why you didn't print the address and name on the box instead of doing it as a label? Well, if, if we would have went like USPS, yeah. it, it, we could have, but the, it, since it was UPS, we got to go through their system and, and their actual labels. And we wanted to have the tracking of it, and we also wanted to have the impact of it, of it, of it being shipped U, UPS rather than USPS. Just because if you look at how those packages come into a company, they UPS stuff seems to get handled a little differently than USPS. Mm -hmm. Plus, these aren't going to fit in mailboxes very well. So, um, you know, we really, you know, the 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 delivery aspect of that, you know, that was a component that they'll be thought about and, and considered. We actually could have shipped them out cheaper uh, uh, via USPS, but it's, uh, we like the impact and the delivery vehicle of, of UPS. And, and that was part of our planning too, um, adding to John. You know, we could have delivered some of these ourselves, but we said, no, let's make it one shipping. Everyone's going to get them at the same time. And that's when we got flooded with all the uh, the, the data from the Pearl, which is actually next on our list here. Before we uh, start talking about that though, keep in mind that when creating a campaign like this, that everything on this box and inside can be variable, and that doesn't just mean text. So as long as you have your shape set up, then I mean the images and everything can be driven by your data. So the, the colors, everything could change. And this is a, just a generic one. You'll see that there's, that there's not a name on this, but this is, um, of course, even the generic is, is a variable. There are any variables in the list that they're going to drop out and be replaced with um, generic text, so that way the sentence still makes sense. So, yeah. And you know, adding on to what Dale's saying is basically, you know, you can put in the uh, on your list uh, gender, uh, you know, different photos, you know, depending on the gender. And we've, we've done a lot of different things before, so if you can be geared towards uh, home value, for example, or um, certain types of real estate options and you could have uh, in your list home and neighborhoods that have home values from you know X to Y and those all get an image of an, you know, a specific type of house and that we can just swap out at the screen because it's all digital. It's geared towards the person on the list and um, that way it's not blanketed for the entire list. Okay, so moving on to the Pearl um, <coughs> And everyone knows what a pearl is by now because they've been around long enough, I think. Uh, but kind of digging this, the, the reporting and results that we got, um, 470, like I said, were sent out. 34.7% uh, was our return uh, on the pearl. That's people that actually filled it out. So 34.7%, it's 169 people. Um, we thought that was pretty good. And, and honestly, the, the, you know, there wasn't a, uh, on this one, since this was, you know, our, our intent of it was the wow factor and everything that I explained earlier, you know, people were going on to say, okay, yeah, I'm going to win that prize, I want to learn more, I want to come to a seminar. Um, so we, we thought, I mean, that percentage was pretty good, and again, that was with the targeted market that we uh, that we selected. And to that point, if, if we were to mail, which again, this is a core part of our business, printing and mailing, and if, if this postcard is even personalized and you mail out, 2,500 of them, I guarantee you're not going to get 34% response on any on any normal type of, of direct mail piece. So again, it's trying to figure out exactly what you're trying to promote here. Um, if it's a house or something being, being sold, that's one thing. But if you've got a, a new product idea, you know, for a client, it's, um, you know, make sure you get that list drilled down and, it creates something dimensional. It creates something, yeah, 
Exactly. exactly. Okay, and then uh, <coughs> incentives. Um, again, it was the iPad, and then we also had gift cards that we gave away as secondary prizes. Um, so we had a total of five prizes. Um, so that was the incentive to get people, you know, to the website, and then it was collecting the data. So um, it's a screenshot of basically breaking down by sales rep and then customer or prospect because we had those identified in our in our list. Um, and then we went through the answers. Uh, marketing spend will be the same last year, 67.9%. That's good. Uh, we will be expanding. That was 21%. So now we're looking at 88% is going to be at the same or better. You know, that's what, as a printing company, we love to hear. 10% um, say they're going to reduce a little bit. So. The tracking does two things, though. I mean, it, you, you uh, get your answers that you wanted for the questions, but you're also tracking the effectiveness of your campaign. So uh, I know that a lot of people now, uh, with money being tight with uh, a lot of companies, they want to make sure that they're getting the most out of their campaign. So it's really a good way uh, to, Pearl's a really good way to <coughs> see what your money is doing and make sure that it's performing. And then you have the answers that you can use when you're uh, then making your sales call. So on the back end, we've got obviously a reporting system here, and we can provide updates on those reports as often as you want to see them. If if we've produced a campaign for you and it incorporates a pearl, we can give you um, a login to a dashboard type of thing in which you can kind of see the results. We can set it up to email them to one person with inside your company, you know, daily or as they come in or what have you. Uh, the one really important thing about the pearl, though, is to create an incentive. All right, we're asking you to take a little time out of your day, so we're going to create some incentive there that um, makes, you know, whether it be a $5 gift card for a McDonald's, you know, coffee or a Starbucks coffee or something like that. You have to put something out there to actually create a little more interest than just, um, hey, answer these questions for me. If you do answer these, maybe you'll get this iPad. Maybe you'll get a, you know, a gift card or something. Um, you know, some of the pearls that we've done, the campaigns, um, and actually the most, the most uh, successful one was done um, for a company out of Cleveland, and they gave out, they spent a lot of money on this, but they gave out, a, you could choose either a $5 gift card for McDonald's or, or Starbucks. And then the sales reps within that company personally delivered each one of those to, to the people, but they were all qualified leads and warm leads at that point, and it was a, a very profitable, camp, profitable uh, campaign for that reason. Any questions on pearls? Uh, QR codes, next. Um, you know, QR codes, it's basically why you're sitting here right now, uh, most of you at least. Because uh, you, you put that on here and it took you to that website and you signed up for the for the seminar. Um, and again, QR personalization, as I mentioned earlier, we can do that so it's personalized to you. But you know, QR codes, we all know we see them everywhere. Um, this past Christmas, uh, I got some cookies from someone and there were QR codes actually on the frosting. Nice. And I clicked it <laughs> and it took me to the site that showed them. Was a, they are basically Christmas holiday, mm -hmm. and it was a video of them making the cookies, stamping the QR codes on there, and then it was the happy holidays. It was, like I said, you see them everywhere. I, I never expect to see them on, on food. And they were <laughs> edible. They were, I mean, actually edible, so it was... Uh, Showed your tattoo. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, how have you seen that now? <laughs> Michelle put one on a hat. She knitted on a cap. <laughs> she called me about that, yeah. Yeah. For a friend, right? Yeah, we yeah. made a video for... Recovering. <laughs> from, from chemo, right? So uh -huh. she got a half yeah, part of yeah. and, and then the video was of every, everyone um, basically supporting well, her. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, so. Cool. Again, I think uh, they're everywhere. You know, if you don't see a QR code on something, I'm just wondering you know, who their marketing manager is, right? <laughs> uh, let's see, what's next? Uh, promotional products. That's, uh, as we mentioned with the shirt and the mouse pad, that's part of our company that is really starting to kind of do one of these right now. Um, we really, we, we've been doing it for three or four years now. Um, we've been doing, if you asked, we would kind of research it out and we've always had someone here um, that has had that background, but in 
February, March of last year, we hired someone full time. We just hired someone else a couple months ago, um, and we're starting to really dive into that, and it's making a, a pretty good impact and, and resource for our company. So, as John mentioned earlier, no, we're not just a, a printing company. We're doing things like this. We're doing, uh, you know, of course, the variable data, which we've been doing for years, but now with promotional products, um, we're trying just to make a, a one-stop shop for a lot of you. On the, on the promotional products end of things is kind of how that started is we have a lot of online storefronts for clients in which they can go online and order their their marketing pieces their you know their brochures and their um, you know signage and banners and, and those types of things and that just kind of evolved into can you order some coffee mugs for me and some pens and store them and 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 ship those out so it's it's just kind of been an evolution it's and it's, um, you know, we now have two, two full-time employees just handling all of our, our promotional products things, which is, you know, as Todd said, is really a, a, a growing aspect of our company right now. And, uh, but it really started from our store, our online storefronts and our clients saying, you're already shipping all this other stuff. Can you just go ahead and take care of this and your store this, that, and the other thing, and just store some pens and shirts and things. So that's, um, like I said, it was just kind of a, of a natural progression for and some of you in the room, I think, have uh, are working with one of our storefronts, and we're up to, I think, almost 70 storefronts now. And that's from uh, customers throughout the country. Um, you know, we've got a, a majority that are based here, but um, you know, I've got a few that, that have the ones in California, ones in Boston, so we're, we're kind of all over the place with the storefronts, because you don't have to be here, you know. All we're doing is fulfilling and shipping and printing on demand products, you know, that are most of them are being UPS out on a daily basis. And to keep in mind for um, promotional products uh, for your uh, for a possible campaign, some of the promotional products that we offer also can be variable as well. I created a kit about a month ago that had was a little suitcase, it was a box like this, a little smaller, and there were uh, luggage tags on each suitcase box, and everything on the luggage tag was personalized, and you could then use that luggage tag on the trip that that uh, box was for. Oh, you don't have a sample idea. No. This is one that, that we did that <clears throat> was for a company that um, they, they represent the distribution of, of sweet potatoes. It's kind of interesting. But, and did you know you can get <laughs> sweet potato stress balls? <laughs> <laughs> only, only from. China, I'm sure, but um, you know, this was a, a kit here that that, that we created and, and produced for this this uh, client, and in it, there's you know three little types of of um, shapes of sweet potato, and these we only produced like 50 or 60 of these, and these were shipped to like dog food manufacturers and, and things like that. Talk about a targeted list. It was like. You know, the Alpos of the world, because I guess sweet potato is a new up and coming thing for pet food. So, um, but this was pretty neat and, you know, obviously very attention getting. You know, you have this show up and you've got sweet potato stress balls. <laughs> but, and, yeah, so. and, and it all started with the, uh, the rep on that account, you know, working with the customer. So, you know, this whole process, it's not like we would expect, hey, this is how I'm going to do something. You know, call us in early, and we'll give you, you know, any information that you need. Uh, Can I ask you a question. Sure. Yeah. On the, back on the kit that you sent out to us, mm -hmm. um, you roughly know how much the mouse pad and the shirt cost. Part of that. I mean, I, I've got a breakdown of that. Uh, I mean, was that part of the seventy dollars? Yes, yes, it was. Yes, it was. So maybe yeah. seventy. It, it was actually it was like sixty, it was 60 it, three and change. Yeah, exactly. 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 It, it's like sixty three. Oh, okay. I just rounded it up to 70. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I could have gone down to 60, but <laughs> most people would round to 60, right? <laughs> 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 well, it's not huge. Uh, no, but, you know, I, I think our UPS charges out of that were six or seven bucks a kit. Uh, I want to say the shirts were maybe that we did those right when cotton was still kind of high. So I, I, we've learned a lot since we've been in the, the promotional side about. Cotton. I never knew I would know so much about cotton and how that market, you know, that commodity goes up and down so much, and your T-shirt pricing goes up and down. So, uh, side note. 
but that, those were, I want to say, six bucks, maybe six, right around that six six dollar mark. And you know, depending on the color and everything, that changes. Mouse pads might have been about the buck fifty two bucks. Um, well, I won't hold you to that, right? Yeah, yeah, right, right. And, and, and I do have a breakdown. You know, trying right? to get that idea. Uh, uh, but, but you know, then, then going to the box, uh, you know, these were three up, uh, as mentioned earlier. Three up on four foot by eight foot sheets of corrugated. Right. So, and, and then what we're also looking at one side, two side. So you're looking at a four by eight sheet prints in about uh, eleven minutes. So eleven minutes times two, that's that's twenty two minutes to to get three of these just printed. Then it's got to go to our eye cut machine. Get cut out. Um, so there's there's a lot of a lot of time involved. It took us approximately two weeks to, to to get these printed and cut. Now that was a constant running. I mean, now that we've done it once, I know we can get it done in a more efficient manner. But uh, um, yeah, there's a lot of steps in there. And then, then you have the kitting and fulfillment part of it too. So um, when you when you have the breakdown, it's not it's not box, you know, mouse pad and, and uh, t-shirt. You know, there's probably, and UPS, but you know, there's probably eight or nine different things that we kind of broke everything out, so. Yeah, I wanted to ask that as well, the, the lead time of like the whole, like this whole project mm -hmm. from, I mean, because you can't hit print until you have your list, right? Exactly. Obviously, right? right? Correct. And, um, you know, how about from, from that time to being able to ship, like, how long does that take? It just takes two weeks just to print and trim the boxes. Well, that's because we did 470 of them. So I mean, there, there, there was, you know, there was a lot of time involved because, um, yeah. you know, the other thing is is that we weren't able to just focus for two weeks. It was kind of in and out, sure. you know, while we did other live jobs. Yeah. So, um, you know, there is, you know, there is a window of of time, um, and and we would just need to work through that on a per project basis based on the the box size, you know, everything that's kind of involved. But it's, it's definitely not something that we try to want to, you know, rock out of here in three days or something. Right? Um, but we are Metzgers and we've been known to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we, we get asked all the time, and crap, hey, can we have these in a week? And if, if you were to, you know, we'd say, okay, how can we get this done? And, uh, God, who pushes you like that? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was standard. <laughs> Come on, you guys know that. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, you know, and, and honestly, look, if, if you were to ask us, you know, how round like he does to get 500 of these boxes done, uh, I would say from the time we got the list, I would, I would probably tell you two and a half weeks. So we get it, and then if you say, no, I have to have it done in two weeks, or I have to have it done in a week and a half, we can come back and we can see what happens. That's that's kind of how what we say, that's how we roll around here. So probably way round it up too. <laughs> <laughs> what about the substrate for the box? Is there different things you can Yeah, yes. there's um, a whole yeah. whole different type of um, well, there are different types of corrugated that, that that we can use. This this particular um, type of corrugated I I believe is called a seed flute and it's it's the it's white and not brown, so it's actually called it's um, in in the corrugated industry. This is called a clay white, but we have a um, a sample ring here of all of 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 the different materials that we'll pass around <coughs> that we're able to print on. Can you cut other shapes other than just boxes? We can oh. cut. Do you see the muddy back there, Karen? The oh. you know the mud head. Mm -hmm. Anything that we can get a a file with a path on it. Is there a limit to like? Can it be small or I mean like card size or something? Yeah, like, like that, these or? like these light bulb things that we're passing around were all cut on the eye cut. So okay. it can it can do some pretty in, intricate things. Um, and is there a thickness and thinness? Uh two limitation? inches is 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 the maximum is, um, in the thickness. And then um, really it'll go down to like paper. So it will cut yes. just in the paper. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Uh, think, things such as wall clings. Mm -hmm. Quite a few of those. So uh, vinyl, static like that. things. Yep. Anything. Uh, yeah, I mean, just plain paper. We did a lot of samples when we first got the machine. Um, that when we take it back there to see the machines, uh, you'll, you'll see some of those as well. And those are all the substrates that we print on. Those are just a lot that we keep in stock. We try to sure. keep in stock. You can print on virtually anything you see, like we talked down the road here. That, uh, can just you anything you think of, we can, you know. What about like plastics? Like, um, like styrene and yep, styrene, like Cetron, yep, Plexi, and a, a 
something called Divon, which is a veneered aluminum. So uh, it's like printing right on metal. It, it is printing right on metal. And we continue to experiment on other materials too. So. And the other thing that um, on the acuity that is the printing device that prints it has a white unit. So it can print CMYK plus white, or in most cases, white plus CMYK, because you know, we can take a, a black piece of center or styrene and print white on it first, and then, and then print CMYK over it. There's um, a sample of a um, piece that we did on a, on a plexiglass, and it was kind of a glass sample type of thing. And you could see right through it, it was clear, and it just wasn't given it the right amount of depth. So after we printed the CMYK, we hit it with white afterward, and I'll, I'll, I'll show you a sample of that on the other side. It really is uh, you know, pretty amazing. Uh, I guess we've already been kind of talking about this, but the printing, uh, it is the Fuji Acuity, that's just the name of the machine, which you'll see that in a few minutes here. We're only about four more uh, topics on the agenda, and then we'll get back there. Um, new life from it. Department prints on virtually anything. Um, John went through a lot of those uh, capabilities. And then the iCut, like he said, is the machine that we actually use to um, cut everything out. And, and again, it's a CAD based system. Um, there, there's actually, what it's using right there is a knife, is what cut this. But um, like you said, the plastics, you know, we can take a half inch plastic piece. Um, it's a CNC router, so it uses. Basically, if you were to take a router and cut something for woodworking at home, it's the same, basically the same type of thing. There's just different blades that you put in there, different router bits um, that get <coughs> inserted in the machine and then you know, cut off the materials. Uh, custom cuts, no die needed, just vector artwork. Uh, straight beveled type of cuts. Uh, can score and drill too, so you know the scoring is also done at the same time. There's a scoring wheel. Um, while it's cutting, it will score. Uh, yeah, so you guys got the book, and, and the one sample will be cast <coughs> uh, Next would be the uh, assembly and fulfillment, our, our world famous mom squad, which is right outside this door. I think uh, hopefully most of you guys have heard about it before. Um, that's our, our department that does everything that can be done by a machine here. And there is so much that is being produced off of a machine, but there's get so much, you can't have a machine build this box, and you can't have a machine insert the mouse, you can't have a machine uh, you know, put this mouse pad in and, and do all this inserting, at least not for under probably $50 million to have a machine built to do that. So, uh, and the mouse pad, like I said, they, they, they are about 12, 14 years old is when we started back in the 80s. I think. Yeah, the idea of the mom squad started, and it's a, um, you know, it's it's basically an on-call, on-call list of part-time moms that we have, that, and and we can staff up or down by 30 people in one business day, and uh, to help help with these specialty type of of kidding and fulfillment and stuffing of envelopes that have all kinds of crazy things in them, and so uh, you know, a, a few years ago, well, more than a few now, you know, we tried kind of the the temp service route, and then uh, Joe and Tom Mesker kind of came up with the idea of, hey, you know, let's put some, let's put a, a note up at our at our two churches and see uh, see if we can get some moms in here. Or a lot of them have college degrees; they're just a lot more qualified and they're dependable. And uh, our mom squad thing is is kind of a fun little thing. They've got Fridays they bring potluck stuff in and best baked goods in the city <laughs> on, fr on Fridays in the mom squad, but. Um, it's a neat group. It's it's it was a great idea that uh, you know Joe and Tom came up with, and it's it's really really helped our business. And uh, the last point on that is the warehousing. We, we've got on the other side of the wall out there, we have our warehouse, which this building here is about thirty thousand square feet, and, and that part of it is about half fifteen thousand. Well, two Thursdays ago, the twenty second, we closed on the building across the street on Arco. So we own that building now, which is 60,000 square feet more uh, that we have uh, access to. So warehousing, that's another big part of our business, as, as John mentioned earlier, with the storefronts. Um, you know, we, we've got a, a, a around 70 storefronts right now, and that takes a lot of storage. And now we've got room for another you know, 150 storefronts. So um, whether it's customers that you have that might need one or, or your companies themselves that might need one, We've got the uh, capacity to, to keep going that part of it. 
And again, with the promotional side of things, we know that's going to fill up as well. I think we got about six or eight acres out back where we can just keep expanding and we plan on staying right here, which is a good location for us for, for quite a while. The uh, this room here, the mech, is is in, inside of addition that's uh, separate from the original building that we purchased, which was the former L LBA Custom Printing Building, and uh, and we doubled the size of it. And when we doubled the size, as Todd said, the addition in the back is a warehouse that is 15,000 square feet, and it's you know we doubled the size of our building four years ago, and we're already on top of ourselves and, and needing more space. So fortunately, the building across the street became available, and we just kind of worked through that. And it, it took some time, but um, it's about an additional 60,000 uh, square feet. So. What's next? Uh, shipping, I, I kind of already explained that, how we got to that uh, part of it, but um, again, you give us a database, and as most of you know, uh, you just insert that in, into the UPS system, and it spits out all 470 labels at once, so you're not typing that in, it's, it's just important. Uh, the data matching I, I spoke about. Uh, and then the social media, um, I'll, I'll kind of let Tim, you want to kind of go over this part of it? Um, if you're going to spend a lot of time and money to do something like this, um, you might as well uh, go all out. And, and social media is um, obviously a very cheap and effective way now, nowadays to, uh, to integrate your campaign. Um, get the word out, um, make sure uh, that people are um, making known that, you know, that we're listening. Um, and once again, we like to integrate uh, campaigns and what we're doing uh, with our brand uh, to create awareness. Um, in doing so, uh, Dan in the back there um, is our social media guy. and The guy um, that's been filming you this whole time? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> He created a custom application through Facebook, uh, kind of a campaign gateway. Um, there's lots of rules and regulations on Facebook nowadays, which you can and can't do, so uh, we try to make everyone happy. Um, but he's the, uh, the man behind the curtain, if you will, um, helping us out there. Um, Facebook isn't and shouldn't be used as a sales tool necessarily. Um, you want to encourage people um, you know, to get likes and whatnot um, on your page. Um, and you want to engage them via uh, incentives. Um, you know, to get a like on your wall, you know, there's various ways to go about it. Um, it's kind of like an advertisement without being an advertisement. Um, but ultimately, the average person has about 130 friends, um, which, uh, you know, three likes, if you will, will have the potential to then reach another 390 individuals. So, you know, 10 likes, you know, multiplies, you know, 3,900 and on it goes. So, you know, Getting people interactive and engaged um, can really, can really help uh, you know, push your brand. Um, that said, don't um, don't just get likes for likes' sakes. Uh, you know, have content there to show prior activity and, and again engage fans with active content. Let them know you're listening. Try to be transparent. Um, if someone has a negative comment, you don't want to just delete it. You want to you want to engage them. Make sure it's um, taken care of um, and let them know that you are there to listen. That's uh, most of the gist of this uh, presentation, I guess. Uh, we would like to uh, take you guys over, actually, into the other building.